Unify Network 9.4 is now available and there are some really big features in this update. So I'm gonna jump through them quickly and we'll have a quick look at them one by one in Unify Network itself. So the first one is object-oriented networking. So the way Unify have mentioned this or the way Ubiquiti have mentioned this is a simple yet powerful way to create dynamic, flexible policies for both devices and networks. You can easily set up routing your traffic through a specific WAN connection. You can set up the security side of it and also QoS, so we'll have a look at that. We have policy table. You now have one central area where you can see everything in terms of your policies. So firewall rules, ACLs, DNS, NAT, QoS, routing, port forwarding. It's all on a single screen. And we have this nice new filter on the left-hand side that we can see everything about it. This, now a lot of people have been also asking for this, which is improvements in terms of IPv6 support. And I think this is them showing you that they are heading in the right direction. So we've got added support for IPv6 NAT. There's some support for people that are based out in Japan. Again, that requires Unify OS 4.4. Uh, DHCP client options for WAN settings, so we'll have a look at that. Added DHCP v6 cos to WAN settings also as well. And improved validation of your IP6 layout. And what that, that improves IPv6 subnet validations. It also adds blocked IPv4 mapped IPv6 addresses from all input fields and disallowed documentation only for sliders such as that one right there, I'm not gonna say it out loud but you can read that just there. And restricted multicast IPv6 addresses to firewall rules only. So then there's a few smaller changes. So there's a whole bunch of dashboard improvements. There's new WAN monitoring and traffic flow graphs. Again, we'll have a look at that shortly. And then some additional features in routing and policy. So added source and destination networks, added destination IP list options, and then they've moved dynamic routing to the policy table. And they've changed VLAN groups on the EFG or the UXG enterprise, depending if you have either of those. There's a slight change in multicast management. So they've added multicast DNS support with granular control of how much traffic is handled between VLANs. This requires AP version firmware 8.1. And then there's a few other things around content filtering as well, where you can add a block page for content filtering or ad blocking. So that's something that's new and useful that we'll have a look at that also as well. And there's a few other things that have been moved around and just stability changes and bug fixes that I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to take a further read. Let's jump into the first one and take a quick look. And right here we can see policy engine and we have three different buttons right here. So we have policy table, we have zones and we have objects. So the first new one is going to be objects. Now, right here at the top, it says works best for full unified deployment, does not support third party equipment. You need to make sure you have the full unify stack to make sure you're taking full advantage of this. And just like things like alarm manager, we move from left to right. So you can pick your device or create a group, for example, your IoT devices or a specific device you want to route somewhere. We can create that group and just select a whole bunch of devices just there. You can also do the same with networks. You can select multiple networks if you want, if that's what you're looking to do. But we're going to go with devices just for now. And I'm going to choose something like my Mac Studio, for example. And then we have three different options. Now, you don't have to do all three or you can do all three or you can do two. It's entirely up to you. If you want to secure that, you can actually turn off Internet access to it if you want or there's a block or allow list. So we have here, which is app, everything, domain, IP address. So we have all of that here. So you can choose how you wanna set that up. We have a schedule and there's also a local option here as well. So if you wanna block traffic between two different devices, so if you wanna add a block list to everything, you can then do that. Or if you want to do an allow, you can select devices, you can select a network, Mac address, et cetera, et cetera. So very granular and very easily, you can set up these rules and configure exactly what you need in terms of the security side of things. Then we look at routing. So you can route all your traffic, domain specific traffic, IP address traffic, region traffic, and then you can choose the interface. If you have a VPN interface or VPN tunnel, you can also select that just here as well. So that's routing. And then we have the QoS option. I wanna QoS all my traffic, and then we can choose the interface or VPN tunnel that's there. You can limit, prioritize, prioritize and limit, and then set a schedule for that as well. So it's really flexible what you can actually do with this. There's so much that you can do in just a click of a button. This has just simplified it and made complex networking things a lot easier to do. So I quickly created one with my Mac Studio using QoS, and you can see there's an icon just down here which says QoS. We had multiple in here. You would be able to filter them or even search depending on how many you have set up. So again, really easy and simple to get set up. Once you've created your first one, you'll have a manage option where you can go and delete if you want, or you can then go to create object and you'll then be able to create multiple of these if you wish to do so. We then have something called policy tables. As I mentioned, we have this on the left-hand side, which we can filter very easily. So ones that have created, which ones are unified default? Is it a NAT based rule? Is it a firewall rule? Is it a DNS record? Now you'll actually see a lot of traffic on here at the moment that's actually paused in terms of rules, in terms of firewall rules. I've been playing around with my networks. so don't be alarmed that they are paused at this point. 
um, but I've been doing a lot of testing and playing around with the network, which is why you might see it like this, but it kind of shows you what's going on. So we have one that I created here, which is a policy-based route. I have a specific route for a device to go out of a specific network. So I then interface, this was before the objects had been set up. So this was the manual way to get this set up. We have the source and the destination. So everything's very easy and simple to get changed. And if you need to create a dynamic routing, you can click to set up here and that has OSPF and BGP set up here too as well. If I go into one of my internet connections and I scroll down to the bottom, we have the IPv6 connections here. None of my ISPs actually support IPv6 at the moment, so it's not something I can demo for you. But you have SLAAC, we have DHCP, and then we have static IP depending on what you've got set up. So DHCP down here, we can see if we select that, we have the DHCP COS. And then you can use that if that's something that your ISP is currently using. Then we move on to some of the dashboard improvements and this we see right here we have the overview of the WAN connectivity so if I select it's going to show me all the stats on here the average download speed upload speed max latency average latency and then any packet loss on the connection if you want to drill that down a little bit further you have the download upload and then you have quality average latency or packet loss if we zoom out ever so slightly we actually have the timing option here as well so one hour one day one week and one month but I'm zoomed in ever so slightly so you can read this a little bit clearer on your screen. There's also a couple of other options up here. We have Wi-Fi. We can see the different Wi-Fi frequencies on here and what's happening within them. 5, 6, 2.4 gigahertz and you can see them. And we also have flows as well. So this is you're quite quickly able to see if there's any block traffic, allowed traffic, what's going through, what's not going through, etc, etc. And then we can have a look at the risk levels as well. And again, we have filters in the top right hand side as well. The, looking at the content filtering, we can go to cyber secure and we have protection right here. Again, I'm not upgraded to the premium version, so I don't actually pay for this currently at the moment. But um, you can see there's a block page right here. Now, to display the block page without any warnings, you need to make sure this UN, Unify SSL certificate is installed on the local machine. So you can go and download that quite easily. Downloaded the Unify certificate, which is just there. So install on each client to show block page browser without warnings. Use Unify Identity for seamless certificate distribution. So if you want to use Unify Identity to do that, you can do. And there's just a tick box right here, which does that for you. And then it automatically distributes the active certificate that you have on the Unify Identity app installed on their client devices. If you have it installed on a Windows machine, it will automatically deploy it out using that app. If you want to add in your own certificate, you can go and click add new and then you can fill all this in here and put your certificate on there if you wish to do so. There's a final one to take a look at and that's the multicast settings. So there's a couple of new options that have appeared and um, I'm not going to dive too much into these at the moment. But if you want to see a dedicated video on something like this, let me know. The first one is multicast and broadcast control. And what that does is it reduces airtime by blocking multicast and broadcast traffic to Wi-Fi clients. It helps reduce the chatter in the air and obviously giving you a better, more seamless Wi-Fi experience. And then we have multicast enhancement, which converts the multicast Wi-Fi traffic to unicast. Again, it will only do that when it's possible, but it reduces the traffic in the air and it gives you a more seamless experience. So that's one. And I'm going to show you just this one of the things. The other one was around multicast DNS. So if I type in multicast DNS at the search function at the top and one feature that I've just noticed that's quite useful on here and it's quite a good UI experience is when you click on multicast DNS, it will tell you do you want to leave, it's fine. It actually highlights it there for you so it shows you exactly where it is so you're not looking around the whole page. So I think that's a nice little touch and add-on. I'm not sure when that came in or what update it might have been even in. It might have actually appeared in this update, I'm not sure, but that's I think that's quite a nice little feature right there. So what this does is it forwards multicast traffics between the selected networks, so IoT devices can discover and communicate with each other when connected to different networks. So if you have a few different devices on a few different networks that are IoT, then they can communicate with each other. And that goes for other devices as well. One last one I'm going to share with you, and it's not specifically mentioned in the Unify OS update, is this little thing right in the bottom right hand corner. Now, from time to time, I hear a lot of people, whether it's on my streams or whether it's in the comments down below, saying this isn't working, this isn't right, you log your tickets, you do this. But if there's some sort of feedback that you want to give saying, I want this support, I'm looking for this, or it'd be nice to have this, this is the place for you to do it right here. So give your feedback directly to the Unify R&D team here. You can type in all your details. You can share your site details if that's something you wish to do. You don't have to, you can untick that box. But what that basically does, is it attaches your site information to assist debugging your configuration. And you can give that feedback right here. I think that pretty much covers it with Unify Network 9.4. There's a lot in there and I'm hoping to bring you some more videos that dive into some of these settings in a little bit more detail. If there's something specific you wanna see, you know what you need to do down in the comments. But for now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.